And in a few minutes, I'll be looking at today's papers with Mundeep Singh Rangar, the chairman of Indus View. Great to have you in the studio. Britain's Colin Jackson was a great 110-meter hurdler. During his career, he was the Commonwealth, the European, and the world champion. He also broke the world record and won silver in the Olympic Games in Seoul in 1988. So when the Games came to Barcelona, he was widely expected to achieve his ultimate ambition and win gold. But as he explains in our latest postcard, things didn't go according to plan. Well, 1992 Olympic Games in Barcelona was a very unique opportunity for me in my sporting career. I arrived at the Olympic venue as the world number one with lots of expectations and excitement of what I could possibly achieve. My achievements up to then were, were pretty good, but I wanted to become the Olympic champion because that was my all-time dream. And to arrive at the Olympic Games as the favorite is, a, is a, a really incredible experience. And my first round went remarkably well, and so did my second round and my semi-final. But unfortunately, I, I picked up an injury after my second round, which really cost me my ability to take the title and also achieve my dream. I ended up finishing seventh, which was a bitter disappointment for me. And of course, I lost my magical Olympic gold moment. Do you know as an athlete, there's a time when you reach your peak, and that was my time. And that's what makes the Olympic Games, I guess, really special, because it's a time and it's a moment in your life. It's now time to take a look at what's making newspaper headlines around the world. The British bank Standard Chartered has hit back hard against U.S. attempts to cast it as a rogue institution for allegedly breaching sanctions on Iran, so says the Financial Times. The International Herald Tribune details Iran's warning to the world that it stands by Syria following a meeting between a top Iranian official and Syria's President Assad. That story illustrated with this striking photo of a Syrian rebel fighter in central Aleppo. Pressure is mounting on Italy's Prime Minister, says the Gulf News business page, with figures showing the economy shrank by 0.7% in the second quarter. Olympics treat for Greggs, says the Independent. The UK's biggest baker of pasties has smashed sales records at its branch next to the Olympic Park, where we are, with takings up as much as 80%. The Guardian heralds Britain's biggest gold medal haul since 1908, helped along by the country's most successful Olympian, cyclist Sir Chris Hoy. And The Times has the story of the British brothers who won the men's triathlon, Alistair Brownlee winning the gold, and his younger brother, Johnny, taking home the bronze. What an amazing family. To discuss these, I'm joined by Bundeep Singh Rangar, the chairman of Indus View. Great to have you in the studio with us. Let's go straight to it. And our first story in the Financial Times, highlighting this very, very difficult situation that Standard Chartered finds itself in. They are defending themselves, defending themselves hard, but their share prices have taken a big hit. Well, with the share price down about 20 percent, about $12.5 billion lost off the market cap, that's clearly a sign that investors are very nervous, and they're nervous because there's so much uncertainty as to what happens next. Standard Chartered does about $195 billion worth of transactions daily. The amount in dispute is about $250 billion that happened between 2001 and 2007 when they are alleged to have done trade with Iran at a time when it faced U.S. sanctions. The question is, did it really go that far? They claim that it's 0.01% of what they're alleging, or what $14 million that may be violating uh, U.S. rules. But the New York State investigator says that, no, it's far more. And that kind of lends itself to a potential money laundering case. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, has deeper implications. For the but, but how serious is a problem is Standard Chartered facing? Because we do know that most of their business is not, in fact, very little is in the United States. It's mainly in Asia and in parts of Africa as well. Absolutely. Its genesis is in Mumbai, Calcutta, Shanghai. And even now, 70% of its top line comes from, uh, from Asia. The U.S., U.K., Europe represent about 14% at most of its profit. But the issue is one of U.S. dollar-denominated transactions, because ultimately it's a clearing bank for transactions which are largely greenback denominated. Uh, and to give an idea, the bank has always prided itself in being the banker's bank. Mm -hmm. So here you've got a bank that is used by the banks that now faces scrutiny. And that's why it's more of a, a dent in their reputation and the possible loss of a New York banking license. That, of course, has implications on their global trade finance, which they are so powerful in. Let's move on to the International Herald Tribune and a uh, striking image of a rebel fighter in 
in, in Aleppo. Uh, the paper reports that uh, Syria clearly ha doesn't have a lot of friends, but Iran is still one of them. Uh, a visit from the, one of the senior security advisors uh, in Tehran, Saeed Jalili, pledging his support for the regime in, in Syria. And, and again, this clearly brings out a very sectarian tone to this with uh, Shia I Iran supporting uh, Shia uh, Syria and on the other side you have the, the Sunni majority looking for support from uh, Sunni groups uh, around the region. Yeah, you can look at the Shia Iran supporting uh, a Shia run government within Syria and of course this whole axis of resistance with Hamas, Hezbollah and, and part of the containment of, of uh, Israel with Syria of course being a key ally there. It's going to be very, very difficult for Iran to do something outside of the military space because they don't have a lot of international clout. They're not present on the United Nations Security Council the way China and Russia have become supporters of, of the Assad regime. So it really will become this last pitch battle where the Free Syrian Army, largely Sunni, is battling the Shia Alawite minority with, with a lot of support from Iran, so much so they even have claims from the Syrian, Free Syrian Army that Iranian Republican guards have been captured amongst prisoners. Let's move on to the Gulf News business page. Pressures mounting on the Italian uh, Prime Minister Mario Monti's government is trying to balance the, the budget and uh, reduce costs, but at the same time, the austerity measures just don't seem to be working for the country. He's gotten away with his two and a half billion dollars worth of spending cuts, but he's postponed the sales tax increase. And that's part of a larger message when you've got a contraction in the economy because it's down 0.7% on the previous quarter, but it's down 2.5% on the previous year's quarter. So you know the economy is shrinking. Uh, and unless they have some major spurs for growth, cutting back itself will not lend itself to a, a stronger or faster growing economy. It also puts into perspective, of course, the slowing down growth in China and India because relative to that, mm. it's still growing three times as much as Western European economies. So it kind of gives you a little perspective on, on overall trade if it's not just... Let's close with thing. your thoughts on uh, the Olympics now. And sure. Britain has broken its own uh, record. Uh, very successful Olympic Games. You have uh, in The Guardian, Sir Chris Hoy surpassing Steve Redgrave uh, as the most successful Olympian. And then uh, we, in the other paper, the, the Times, you have the two brothers doing it incredibly well in the triathlon. Um, they should be proud of themselves, but it's, it's really met expectations, at least for medals. Uh, absolutely. It's the home court advantage, right? Because every time a, com a country hosts the Olympics, there always is a boost to their home take on the, on the gold medals and overall medals. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Sh China got, went up north of 158 to 100. Uh, Sydney, of course, uh, Australians won the most gold medals ever. Korea since Seoul, they've consistently won more gold medals from less than seven to more than 22. Mm -hmm. And Barcelona, the same effect for Spain at that time. Now, of course, you've got some fantastic stars here, Chris Hoy mm -hmm. and, and the two brothers. Wish Johnny had not got the 15 second penalty because we yeah. might have gotten a silver there too for the triathlon. So it's been a good Olympics for Britain. It's been a fantastic one for Britain, as long as we can keep it up and, and see that in the next one in Rio. All right. Thank you so much, Bundeep Rangar from Indus View. It's been uh, good for Britain. I'm sure it's going to be uh, good for the remaining days that uh, are left in the Olympics. You're watching BBC News. We'll have more news coming up at uh, the top of the hour. We're leaving you with this beautiful image of the Olympic Stadium.